There you are, you can't hide from me forever. Season 10 preview, now watching, all right. It's over. Someone might have It's over! The chest, oh no, Sea of Thieves, it's over! That's what he said. He said it's over. It's it's all over. <laughs> Alright, I don't know what that is, but that looks like uh, one of those promised features that they said it was going to be like a cooperative thing or something. I don't know. I'm making stuff up as I as I go. Let's uh let's let's strap our booty in and watch this thing. Hello and welcome Hello. to the Sea of Thieves Season 10 Preview. We're going to be hearing from the team here at Rare as they give us the lowdown on the headline features coming to Sea of Thieves as part of Season 10. With a whole new way to engage in social play, to a competitive experience within the shared oh. world, and an exciting new feature that will fundamentally change how you play the game. We are bringing an incredible Fundam amount of fundamentally new features to me. Season 10. So to get things started, let's go over to Sea of Thieves creative director, Mike Chapman. Tell us, Chapman, what do we got? Hello, everyone. Firstly, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for your patience and understanding regarding the delay to season 10. We know that There's not been a whole lot of patience out there, if you ask me. But what this means is that season 10 will now very much be a super season. Super when season 10 launches on October 19th, it will feature the experience originally planned for season 10. But for November, November will include the experience we planned for season 11. And for December, something a little bit different. A season new 12. way to play and enjoy Sea of Thieves, something we've been thinking about for a very long time. But for now, I'm gonna hand over to Shelley and James, who will talk you through the first feature that will be launching with season 10 on October 19th. Guilds. Guilds! What? In season 10, we're guild. introducing guilds, which is a new way for players to form meaningful bonds beyond their immediate crew and builds on the uniquely engaging social gameplay of Sea of Thieves. We believe that being part of a crew and playing together is one of the best ways to experience Sea of Thieves. We wanted to bring that experience to more players more regularly. Guilds bring players together under a shared name and identity with common goals, which really gives players that framework to experience the best of the shared social gameplay. With guilds, you can have 24 of your friends, or enemies if you like to keep them close, in the guild with you at any one time. Ooh. We kept it at 24, so the experience was an intimate affair, Interesting. making sure that you knew everyone who was contributing to your success. Any captain who has their own ship is able to create a new guild because you need that very first ship to be pledged into the guild. But beyond that, anybody can join the guild, whether they're a captain or not. When you set up a guild, you get to choose a few unique properties on it. You get to give it a name, something unique to speak to your guild members. You get to give it a motto to make sure that you're all striving for the same goal. And also you can choose the branding, Whoa. the pictures, the iconography that really will that show time. your guild off. Once you join a guild, you can pledge any of your captainships into the guild. And you can also choose whether or not to share it with your guild mates. If you share it, they can take it out even when you're not online. All your cosmetics and your identity, all your trinkets and paintings, mm. everything will be as you left it. And they can even progress the captaincy milestones on that ship while oh, you're nice. offline. No matter whether you want to go and collect loot, whether you want to fight under the hourglass, any action you take in the Sea of Thieves will progress your milestones forward. Even better, you can progress while you're offline. Your friends can be sailing under your guild banner when you're away on holiday or asleep. So you'll come back Pyramid refreshed, scheme. Ha, ha, ha. with a shiny new hat. As everyone in your guild contributes to earning that shared guild reputation together, you will unlock new and unique rewards for you and your guild. And you can even earn a distinction at every 100 levels of reputation, unlocking further rewards. Guilds brings players together like never before, and we're super excited to see the guilds you create when Season 10 launches on October 19th. In November, as part of Season 10, we're launching a brand new voyage called the Skull of Siren Song. The Skull of Siren Song is our first competitive voyage, and it will see players share the same treasure maps and compete and race to collect a single piece of treasure. Like other world events, the Skull of Siren Song will appear randomly throughout your session. And when it's active, you'll see this ghostly note appear pinned into the mast, and you can interact with that, opt your crew into the event, and take part. 
When this voyage becomes active and you see that note on your mast, you know that every other crew in the server is also seeing that and they become potential rivals as you all seek out the Skull of Siren Song. This sense of mystery around the other crews that may or may not be hunting down the same treasure as you provides real tension, especially to the start of these shared voyages. You'll spend much of your time scanning the horizon, searching for sails that could be approaching with the view of taking your hard-earned treasure. So once you've accepted the voyage, the ghost of Captain Briggsy will appear Briggsy. on your ship and set you on the hunt I like for the skull her. of Siren Song. So it's this high intensity race for all crews headed towards this one piece of treasure. At the start of the voyage, every crew who opts in will receive two maps. One leads to a key and the other to a chest. And once <laughs> players have dug up those two items, they have to combine them to open the chest and retrieve the skull of Siren Song. So in the early stages of the voyage, one crew might have the key and another might have the chest. And at any point, these items could come together or change hands or a new ship may yeah. arrive and take both of them. And this kind of unpredictability makes these stages really exciting as no one's quite sure what's about to happen and you have to react to all sorts of different circumstances. So what I love about it is the quest isn't over till it's over. Someone might have the key, someone might have the chest but you can see the beacons in the sky, you can track them on the world map table, and you can ultimately cool. sail well, play well together as a crew, and intercept them and steal the treasure for yourself. Once the chest has been opened, the That's Skull cool, of Siren cool. Song belongs to the crew who opened it, at least for now. This new item is a powerful weapon that can be used against other crews to defend your ship, <laughs> but it also comes with its own set of challenges. So once you've got the skull on board, you have to protect it with your crew but that skull is cursed, and that's going to make your ship slow down, which means other oh. crews will slowly start to catch you up. So whether you've got the skull on board or whether you're chasing after the skull, it's not over until it's over. Oh my. This slowing down of the lead ship makes for some really tense moments as you almost can't avoid combat. We think this voyage is really exciting because it's a more focused, competitive voyage that can take place as part of your normal Sea of Thieves sessions. The unpredictable nature of when it's going to start and who else may be battling you for this treasure is an exciting moment to have, and crews will have to adapt and react to this if they want to be the ones to claim the skull for themselves. We're really excited to see the Skull of Siren Song bring players together in this competitive voyage, and you'll be able to play it yourself in November. Nice. As you saw there, we've got some great new experiences coming to Season 10. Social play has always been at the heart of Sea of Thieves, and that's why we're so excited to bring player-created guilds to the game. And just that idea of racing to find the treasure against other pirate crews in the world is why we're so excited for the Skull of Siren Song. But as we look to December, we've got something a little bit different planned. As we look back on the journey we've been on creating Sea of Thieves, right from our original launch back in March 2018 to where we are today with the game and its community, one of the most passionate and resounding pieces of feedback from both existing fans, but also players intrigued by Sea of Thieves, is the desire to play outside of the shared world. The ability to experience pirate adventures in Sea of Thieves on your own or just with your chosen friends. This is something we've thought long and hard about. How do we provide players with the ability to do that? while also safeguarding what's so unique and magical about the shared world of Sea of Thieves. After lots of consideration, we believe we've got the answer to that in Safer Seas. Safer Seas? Safer Seas is a new way of playing and enjoying Sea of Thieves. It allows you to play alone or with up to three chosen friends in a private world in Sea of Thieves. What's really important to stress is that the game that Sea of Thieves represents today, all of that shared world magic of the game, that continues to be the primary way of playing the game. But the adventure mode in Sea of Thieves will now give you two distinct options. High seas, the game as it is today, but also safer seas and that new way to play and enjoy the game. Over the last five years of creating Sea of Thieves, the game has grown into this huge experience with so many diverse aspects to it. And the reality of that is we want to teach people how to play the game, but we also don't want to lose the joy of discovery. So the way we think about Safer Seas is as a great way to learn the essentials of Sea of Thieves, to be able to learn the flow and the pace of the game PvE before then servers. moving on to high seas. And alongside allowing newer players to get to grips with the game, 
It also allows experienced players to truly immerse themselves in the world and take it at their own pace, experiment, and see everything the world's got to offer on their own terms. So we see Safe as Seas as very much a complimentary way of enjoying with Sea this. of Thieves. I'm a down. new way to enjoy the game with your friends or to immerse yourself in the world. Safer Seas won't evolve separately with its own unique features. It just provides that new window into experiencing Sea of Thieves for the first time. So when we think about the specifics of what progression means in Safer Seas, as I mentioned earlier, we want this to be a way to learn about the game, learn about the systems and how to progress in the game. So players will earn progression in certain trading companies, but it will be at 30% 30%. of the value of what you'd earn in Good. high seas. Should so be. both progression and gold will be earned, but at 30%. In terms of progression in trading companies, oh. your progression will be limited to level 40. So the choice with that cap is very much deliberate. We want you to be able to experience all the multitude of unique voyages across those trading companies and experience what it feels like to move up through the promotions of each of those trading companies. But crucially, you won't be able to become a pirate legend in Safer Seas. Oof. And in fact, the Athena's Fortune trading company that That's represents good, pirate legends, its voyages, its activities, commendations, rewards won't be available at all in Safer Seas. Okay. So alongside that, there's a whole host of experiences that we don't believe are right for Safer Seas. The PvP focus of the Reaper's Bones and the ability to play as the factions as part of that PvP gameplay that won't be available in yep. Safer Seas. The ability to purchase this is and PvE captain servers, your own ship. But I think the ability to join one of these this seems added, like it's done right. I think they've done it right. The ability to play as a trading company emissary. These are you're going to want PvE servers. You're going to be limited. Available on high seas. So high seas very much remains that primary and aspirational mode of play in Sea of Thieves. But Safer Seas provides you this alternative way to learn the basics, the rhythm and pace of the game. Play through all There's tall tales. If you want to do, we'll play tall tales, you do that. What's available in each mode as we get closer to our launch in December. We believe Safer Seas unlocks whole new Sea of Thieves experiences. That idea of going on a pirate adventure with your family, exploring the world at your own pace, the ability to immerse yourself in the storytelling of the world, playing all of those tall tales, maybe going on a fishing trip with your friends or capturing cool go. video content to share. Without the yeah. worry of scanning the horizon for other unknown players, we believe that Safer Seas will lend itself a completely unique feel. This is very much your story in a private world, and we believe that complements the adventures that you can have on the high seas. This is the right time to bring Safer Seas to the game. The game over the years has evolved to be so big and diverse with all of these wonderful experiences on offer. We want to provide an effective way for new players to come into the game and understand what makes it so special. And as we look to the future of the game, we're more excited than ever to make this the best pirate game possible. If you like pirates, there should be something in Sea of Thieves for you. That's why we're so excited for Safer Seas and the future ahead next year. With these three headline features arriving as part of Sea of Thieves these are headlines. Season 10, this is There's going to be, be our more. biggest season ever. On October 19th, with guilds, you'll be able to play with others under a shared identity, creating meaningful social bonds, all while engaging in a new progression route that will unlock some incredible new rewards. In November, with the Skull of Siren song, you can take part in a fast-paced adventure, battling against other crews in an action-packed race to be the first to claim a powerful ancient artifact. And in December, with Safer Seas, you'll have the option to head out onto the Sea of Thieves nice. and engage with the world at your own pace. Whether you're sharpening your skills at a sea fort or taking on one of our many tall tales, this will allow you to experience a large portion of Sea of Thieves in your own way. We're incredibly excited for you all to experience the new features that we've outlined here today. But this, of course, is just part of what we're bringing with Season 10. Keep an eye on our social channels for more information about what else Colored is coming as part of the season and for more detailed looks about the features we've mentioned today. We're now at the end of this Season 10 preview. So thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the seas. October 19th. That's less than a month away. Less than a month away for guilds. 
All right, so looks like the premiere is over. Let's let's scan through this stuff again. Um, okay, so there's three key points, but wait, there's more. Yeah, there's like anything with anything when it comes to these um, these seasons, they show you the headline stuff, and there's usually some more stuff intermingled in there. Like they announced the other day, there's gonna be colored robots on Twitter. It's a little extra something something, but. Uh, Anyway, so the three main things is guilds. So <laughs> number one, I'm going to start a guild. Uh, and yeah, apparently only 24 people can join, which is interesting. I don't know how I feel about that. Not sure how I feel about that one. Um, create when season 10 launches on October 19th. Let's look back at what they were saying about that. In November, okay, that's Skull Siren Song. They mentioned it. it was like the last thing they mentioned. That is during the con. <laughs> yeah, so I'll be got I'll be at TwitchCon at the moment. <laughs> at that moment. Uh let's see. Oh, I think I think buffering's in a weird place now that's progress it's, your milestones forward. Even better. You can progress while you're offline. Your friends can be sailing so into guild, guild milestones when you're away on holiday or asleep. Yeah, so there's commendations. Possibly with a shiny new hat. As everyone in your guild new contributes cosmetics. to earning that shared guild reputation together, you will unlock new and unique rewards for you and your guild. And you can even earn a distinction at every 100 levels of reputation, unlocking... Every... She said every 100 levels of reputation so this is going to be another thing like the pvp uh pvp rep so servants and guardians but it's going to be guild uh based I'm waiting for them to announce captain robots <laughs> let's go captain robots further rewards guilds brings players together like never before and we're super excited to see the guilds you create when season 10 launches on october 19th all right yeah i'll be making a guild to see all your trinkets and paintings everything will be as you left it and they so what were they saying is this like a guild ship whether or not to ship any of your captain ships into the guild and you can all okay oh, okay so like if i wanted to uh send out slooper duper and have uh people be like hey i want to ride out on the slooper duper today like i'm on duty or something like that and they're like i want to ride on the slooper duper they can do that that's pretty cool and it uh, furthers milestone stuff. Ship can be pledged to one guild at a time. Pledge ships will move from your cap, will move from your captain ships to guild ship. Interesting, interesting. I don't know exactly what that means. Moving it Into from the to the other one. But beyond that, anybody can join the guild, whether they're a captain or not. When you set up a guild, you get to choose a few unique properties on it. You get to give it a name, something. So we get na we get a name for the guild. A um, uh, to... a slogan. Uh, we get okay. So guild members, guild ships, emissary and ledger. Interesting. Uh, it shows you who said like who sailed and when they sailed. That's cool. Speak to your guild members. You get to give it a motto to make sure that you're all striving for the same goal. And also, you can choose the brand. I love that you can like completely customize your brand too. The pictures, the iconography that really will show your guild off. Once you join a guild, you can pledge any of your captain ships into the guild, and you can also choose whether or not to share it with your guild mates. If you share it, they can take it out even when you're not online. All your cosmetics and your identity, all your trinkets and paintings, everything will be as you left it, and they can even progress the captaincy milestones on that ship while you're offline. No matter whether you want to go and collect loot, whether you want to fight under... Also, another thing, uh, this is actually what it's supposed to look like. I feel like whenever I load into the game, it's always like white sails and it's not properly showing the ship. So maybe they fix that. Hopefully they fix that. Also, hit reg. Hopefully they fix, fixed if you hit share reg. It, they can take it out. Hey, see you later, living. Good to see you, man. Even when you're not online, all your cosmetics and your identity... All to speak so let's let's run it back a little friends, bit or enemies if you like to keep them close in the guild with you at any one time it crew and builds on the uniquely engaging social gameplay of sea of thieves we believe that being part of a crew and playing together is one of the best ways to experience sea of thieves 
we wanted to bring that experience to more players more regularly. Guilds bring players together under a shared name and identity with common goals, which really gives players that framework to experience the best of the shared social gameplay. With guilds, you can have 24 of your friends, or enemies if you like to keep them close, in the guild 24. with you at any one time. So, so 25 members of the guild. Interesting. I feel like I feel like this is going to be something where they're going to be like, you know what? We're going to increase the 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 amount of people who can join a guild after a little while. I think that's what they're going to do. Or maybe as you level up your guild, you can earn more more slots for more members. I would love that. We kept it at twenty four, so the experience. I mean, but to be real though, like for me, starting a guild um, as like a streamer, like a streamer headed guild. Um, at my, at my level of how many people show up to the streams and stuff, I feel like 24 will actually be pretty good. I think that'll probably work out. So, but like, if you're talking like, say, if Hippo wants to make a guild, that's going to be tough for him to figure out who is joining that guild. This was an intimate affair, making sure that you knew everyone who was contributing to your success. Any captain who has their own ship is able to create a new guild. But that's why they, that's why they say that, that you can have t only 24 buddies on the guild is because uh, they want you to n make sure that you know everyone who is in the guild, which makes sense. But also, I think that cap should be raised. Because you need that very first and ship I think to it be will. pledged into the guild. But beyond that, anybody can join the guild, whether they're a captain or not. When you set up a guild, you get to choose a few unique properties on it. You get to give it a name. Okay, so... We this covered this enough. Like Let's go over to uh, Shiny new hat. Skull of Siren Song. You can Guilds are cool. We've been waiting for them for a while. As everyone in your guild contributes to earning that shared guild reputation together. So that comes... So guilds come in October. And then November is Skull of Siren Song. And then December is Safer Seas. Which, okay, we'll talk about rewards. Safer Seas later. <laughs> you create when season 10 launches on October I don't 9th. even have 24 friends. <laughs> well, hey, then you won't have a problem then, will you? <laughs> In November, as part of season 10, we're launching a brand new voyage called the Skull of Siren Song. The Skull of Siren Song is our first competitive voyage, and it'll see players... Competitive voyage, so it's a PvP voyage. Share the same treasure maps and compete and race to collect a single piece of treasure. Like other world events, the Skull of Siren Song will appear randomly throughout your session. And when it's active, you'll see this ghostly note appear pinned into the mast. I love, I love how they do that, how it's like, you'll have to look out and see if that thing just happens to be there, then it's game on. Otherwise, you're like, when is it going to show up? Because they say it's like seemingly random when it shows up. And you can interact with that, opt your crew into the event and take part. Come on, YouTube. I know a thousand million Sea of Thieves players are watching this right now. Let me, uh, maybe I'll refresh this page and go back to it. Hello and welcome. Oh, now to it's a video. CFD's okay. That's a lot better. Preview. In this voice. It's nice that it shows up on your boat and you don't have to find an output. Yeah, it's just like there. It's like, okay, let's go. That adds a little bit more, like, uh, fluidity to being on a ship, I feel like. Uh, alright, where was this at? Active, and you see the ghostly Time stamps are a little bit farther back. Mast, and you can interact with that, opt your crew into the event, and take part. When this voyage becomes active, and you see that note on your mast, you know that every other crew in the it's server is also getting seen. down time. They become potential rivals as you all seek out the Skull of Siren Song. This sense of mystery around the other crews that may or may not be hunting down the same treasure as you provides real tension, especially to the start of these shared voyages. You'll spend much of your time scanning the horizon, searching for sails that could be approaching with the view of taking your hard-earned treasure. So once you've accepted the voyage, the ghost of Captain Briggsy will appear on your ship and set you Briggs on the hunt cool. for the skull of Siren Song. So it's this high-intensity race for all crews headed towards this one piece of treasure. At the start of the voyage, every crew who opts in will receive two maps. Two maps. One leads to a key and the other to a chest. And once players have dug up those two items, they have to combine them to open the chest and retrieve the skull of Siren Song. Okay, so... Okay, so so your crew gets two. 
your crew everybody gets two maps one for the key one for the chest and you have to go and get both of those so there's the potential that another crew is going to get part of the puzzle and then at that point it's for up to you guys to decide how you're going to tackle it are you going to are you going to uh, ally up and say, hey, let's turn this in together? Or are you going to just slay the other ship or get slayed? So in the early stages of the voyage, one crew might have the key and another might have the chest. And at any point, these items could come together or change hands or a new ship may arrive and take That's both true. of them. That's true. And a this new kind ship of could... unpredictability makes these stages really exciting as no one's quite sure what's about to happen. And you have to react to all sorts of different this is, circumstances. This is so good. Have... This is like... This is emergent gameplay, uh, organic gameplay that you like, you want. So you're going to be looking for that thing. Somebody else is going to be looking for that thing. And then y'all are eventually going to come together and do some PVP nonsense. It's going to be great. Um, I want to say it's going to be better than, um, better than the chest of fortune for sure. I'd say. The quest isn't over till it's over. Someone might have the key, someone might have the chest, but you can see the beacons in the sky, you can track them on the world map table. In, in and having, ultimately... having more things, like, popping up on your map, I like that. Because, like, we got the Reaper's chest, Reaper's bounties, uh, you know, we got Reapers, we got uh, baby Reapers with the flag or whatever, but really not much else. Um, so having, having more little things pipping up on the... Uh, on the map is going to be great because that is a as a thing for players to go and do uh that is of more high value than maybe something else they were already doing and so it kind of fills out the map a little bit more with more stuff to do they sail well play well together as a crew and intercept them and steal the treasure for yourself once the chest has been opened the skull of siren song belongs to the crew who opened it at least for now also for what yourself. is once the chest what is going on over here what is that is that um uh, well i don't know what that is <laughs> what is that it has been opened the skull of siren song belongs to the crew who opened it at least for now this new item is a powerful weapon that can be used against other crews to defend your ship so it looks like an ice beam ice breath uh right now it looks like it just does some solid solid bad breath damage um but not like uh, damage over time, I guess. Maybe it's just like solid burst damage or something. But it also comes with its own set of challenges. So once you've got the skull on board... Okay, so I'm sure you can sell it for a lot of money, too. Treasure for yourself. So once the chest has been opened, the skull of Siren Song belongs to the crew who opened it, at least for now. Skull of Siren Song. This new item is a powerful weapon that can be used against other crews to defend your ship, but it also comes with its own set of challenges. So once you've got the skull on board... Imagine having that and taking out a skeleton fort. That would be pretty wild. Board, ...you have to protect it with your crew. But that skull is cursed, and that's going to make your ship slow down, which means other crews will slowly start to catch you up. So whether you've got the skull on board or whether you're chasing after the skull, it's not over until it's over. This slowing down of the lead ship makes for some really tense moments as you almost can't avoid combat. Yeah. We think this voyage is really exciting because it's a more focused, competitive voyage that can take place as part of your normal Sea of Thieves sessions. The unpredictable nature of when it's going to start and who else may be battling you for this treasure is an exciting moment to have. And crews will have to adapt and react to this if they want to be the ones to claim the skull for themselves. We're really excited to see the Skull of Siren Song bring players together in this competitive voyage. And you'll be able to play it yourself in November. I love, I love that they're like doubling down on like PvP functions and stuff. Like we got, uh, we got the, um, last year we got the, uh, reapers versus or servants versus guardians still haven't got used to saying servants <laughs> or guardians athenas versus reapers and uh, i like the fact that they're they're like yeah we're still gonna add even more pvp stuff and make a pvp voyage i think that's cool so i'm excited for As that you saw there, we've i'm excited got for guilds new experiences coming to season 10 social play has always been at the heart of sea of thieves and that's why we're all right, so let's skip forward in this. Why we're so excited for the skull. Basically, look back on the journey we've basically been what he's talking about is like, hey, uh, we know this is going to be extremely controversial, 
but PVE servers, essentially. On creating Sea of Thieves right from our original launch. Intrigued by Sea of Thieves. Let's move Chris on. Pirate to that in Safer Seas. Okay. Safer Seas. Safer Seas is a new training wheels new way of playing and enjoying Sea of Thieves. It allows you to play alone or with up to three chosen friends in a private world in Sea of Thieves. What's really important to stress is that also it's private that servers, game that sea but for everybody's. All right, so high seas is like they're doubling down and saying, "Hey, high seas is going to be your main main go to experience. Uh, safer seas is like, hey, uh, I gotta go in there." And I got to go into, um, this is actually going to be good for like creators too, Safer Seas, because you can do a, like a private server type thing and invite people like for like fishing or whatever. If you just want to do fishing all stream, or if you want to be like, Hey, I want to make a YouTube video and I don't want to be bothered. Um, you can do that and just go sail wherever you need to do, get your, get your filming done. And then, uh, without any interruptions um it looks like safer seat well we'll look well there's a whole thing that shows all the features of it but it says experiences are limited in safer seas golden rep are earned at a reduced rate so don't expect going into pve servers expecting to be like oh i'm gonna get pirate legend or i'm gonna uh, uh just get all the gold that i can and not be hindered by other players no for for the real gold the real rep go to the high seas that's where everybody else is going to be i love the idea of pve servers because when i started out i thought there was nothing more frustrating than being attacked when i was just trying to chill and do a tall tale yeah um dude like i mean i feel like pve pve server the people who have been wanting and screaming for pve servers uh number one that has not been me but uh, number two, uh, those that have, they have somewhere to go now. And so, like, no, they're, they're long gone is the days of saying, oh, they were doing a tall tale. We can't sink them. No, no, there's no more of that. There's no more of that. So I am stoked for that, too, because there's going to be, I feel like there's going to be less angry people on the seas. Because if you get sunk on the high seas, and you're trying to do something that's like solely PVE focused or whatever, and or you're trying to uh, do a tall tale or whatever uninterrupted, you have no excuse to not be on safer seas. I seas, the game as it is today, but also safer seas and that new way to play and enjoy the game. Over the last five years of creating Sea of Thieves, the game has grown into this huge experience with so many diverse aspects to it the game before they're moving on and see everything the world's got All to right. offer on their own terms so we see say rest in see. the game so players here's the here's the deets here's but the it will deets. be at 30 percent of the me too land me too uh i'm vi like i don't know like i'm excited for guilds but like also this new pvp voyage coming out is super exciting and then after that the safer seas thing just just honestly, just to like keep some heat off of like uh, the developers and not be so concerned, not be as concerned as before, which I wasn't really that concerned about killing tall tellers or whatever. Like there's going to be less excuses to be to complain, less excuses to complain in the Sea of Thieves. And I think that's awesome. Son has really wanted to play, but I think he's too young. D yeah, uh, I mean, that's a perfect opportunity there as well, uh, Defstat. That's a good point. Like, it, for somebody who's like, hey, I'm like four years old, bro. <laughs> like, Safer Seas is going to be where it's at uh, to develop, you know, those play skills before they're ready to take on the, the main high seas. But yeah, reputation and gold values on Safer Seas will be down to 30%. So... You can't go in there expecting to be like, all right, I'm going to I'm going to be uninterrupted and grind all the gold that I want or all the rep that I want. Uh furthermore, uh trading company progression is capped at level 40, so don't go in there expecting to hit pirate legend because you won't. 
becoming a pirate legend, which is another thing that I didn't even think about. But becoming a pirate legend, uh, you'll have to do that on the main servers. And the funny thing about this is level 40, when, when you're level 40 on your way to pirate legend, that's about actually the halfway point. So like 10 levels of uh, progression will have to take as long as it took you to get that level 40 there. Which is good. Guilds are going to be cool. New Voyage is going to be fun. wonder if they'll allow more than one guild ship on a server. I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will uh, allow one, more than one guild ship on a server. Um, I don't think... Because they, they said there's going to be a cap of 24 uh, per guild for now. Or cap of 25, actually. Counting the guild leader. Um, I don't think they're going to let everybody on the same uh, guild be in the same server. Which is kind of weird. I don't know. Like... It's, it's kind of hard to balance, I feel like, but um, although it would be cool if like for guilds, uh, they allowed galleys to have six players. If, if it only if it was a guild ship, that'd be mega cool. Uh, that would give everybody the, the uh, what is it, the, the war machine or whatever people are wanting. I don't know. It'd be tough to balance though. Hey, what up, Aaron? How are you today? Hey, hey, Ron, what's going on? Uh, but anyways, yeah. Safer seas. To level 40. So the choice with that cap is very much deliberate. We want you to be able to experience... Yes, be deliberate, Mr. Man. Be the deliberate. ...the of unique voyages across those trading companies for seas. So alongside that... All right, so here's the breakdown. So key features exclusive to high seas. Become a pirate legend. You can't do that unless you put on your big boy pants. Earn rep and gold for Athena's fortune and Reaper's bones. Uh, they won't let you... You can't grind Athena or Reaper's um, if you're not on the high seas, which is great. Hourglass faction battles, of course, make sense. Uh, only on the high seas. Captain your own ship. So, of course, if you're not a pirate legend, you can't... Uh, well, probably you probably won't be able to grind milestones either um, on your captain ship. Sail as part of a guild. Makes sense. Because you're in a private server, essentially. Sail as a trading company emissary. So on top of the reduced gains, you can't sail as an emissary. Interesting. So you're going to be getting even less gold than you think. Uh, in rep. Live events such as Golden Glory. That makes sense. No Golden Glory for you. If you're not going to be on the high seas. So, yeah. So, the only thing for me... Well, let's see if there's anything else in here. There's a whole host of experiences that we don't believe are right for okay. safer seas. The PvP... Yeah, so, there's this stuff here. Um, the, uh, for me, uh, talking about what I... What will be helpful for me, if there is a way on the, on the high... On the low seas, I guess. Was it safer seas? On the safer seas... To, um, let's say I'm trying to do uh, my Merchant Alliance quests. If I can get Commendation credit for those and just get all the all the piggies and chickies and snakies taken care of, all these annoying, like, really annoying um, commendations that I've just been burning a hole in my pocket, I'm going to Safer Seas for that. Uh, everything else, High Seas, uh, Safer Seas, though, like, would be also a good opportunity if I decided to like film some stuff for a YouTube video, I can invite some people over into the server and we could film some YouTube video stuff. So six, oh yeah, that's true. Six player galley would be unstoppable. I don't really think there's any place for a six player galley. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so yeah, I think that's it. And he mentioned, of course, like always, these are just the, the three, headline features being rolled out within three months um i uh i hope they deliver exactly on time as they say i mean i guess they did with monkey island too the three month thing uh which we're getting that next thursday by the way monkey island part three comes out next thursday i'm excited for that i'm gonna be streaming that um yeah i'll be uh I won't be on duty that day, so I will be streaming that whole thing that day. Um, so yeah, other than that, we've got Guilds, Skull of Siren Song. So Guilds in October, Skull of Siren Song in November. 
safer seas in December. So it's going to be kind of a rolled out process. Should be good. Should be interesting. In colored robots. There you go. <laughs> uh, oh, good. I just finished part two. Good, man. Good. Yeah, dude. Part two was good, too. I, I really liked part one and part two of Monkey Island. I'm really excited for part three. I really liked the biomes from part one and two. Um, but part three's biome looks really cool as well. The the Monkey Island proper looks really cool. So, so yeah, that's season 10. Um, and, of course, there's some other features that are hidden. You know, they didn't mention uh, hit reg or cheating, which I don't know if that really fits in a in a preview for a season of content. I think that's something that's going to be settled off to the side a little bit. And they'll probably mention things in notes if they do fix anything with those, which they need to. The, those are the two things. Like, number one, of course, is fixing the cheaters. Uh, fixing the cheaters. Number two, uh, we just need some kind of anti-cheat. That's all we need. They say there's an anti-cheat in it, but it's a very bare-bones anti-cheat. Uh, number two, uh, we need... Uh, lost my train of thought. Not important. <laughs> I just have one more commendation to finish, but that should be easy enough. Oh, for Monkey Island? Yeah. Which one is that? Is it the journals? That kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. That kind of stuff will be in patch notes. Um. So, yeah. And then, but like, I mean, for real, when it comes to safer seas, I'm, I am glad... The PVE server, uh, those that who want PVE servers, they're going to get them and they will have no excuse anymore. No excuse, except they're going to complain that, oh, there's no, uh, I can't get as much gold as the PVP servers. But, I mean, you know what? It's all good. I have to send the, oh, you... you Oh, you haven't murdered uh, Stan? You haven't outright murdered Stan yet? <laughs> Apparently, uh, in the next week or two, we're going to be able to get his coat as an item in the store. I might, I just might do it. I just might do it. Because that coat's pretty cool, not going to lie. As a streamer, do you think that having safer seas is going to limit content creation? Um... That's a good question. Um, I th I feel like as uh, as a as a content creator in safer seas, um, you could get a lot of like uh, vod content done, like B roll, and uh, you know if you're like, hey, I need a couple crewmates to make a a video or something, you could do that. But as far as like live content, um, I feel like the people. I feel like usually the content that you want isn't the people that are like, I'm doing tall tales. Um, the content you want is the guys out there doing PVP, um, hunting down world events. I, I feel like I feel like a lot of unsavory um, situations on the high seas are going to be reduced because of safer seas. And you're going to have more experienced players playing on the high seas. Uh, a lot of the, the newer people or those that are just don't want to do PvP, they're going to be relegated to those safer seas more so. So I think I think it actually has potential for it to be a positive thing for content. And as long as the server matchmaking is working, um, they should relegate all the everybody into those servers. So that was the way I was thinking about it. Had a friend make the comment that this is going to make streamers mad because there will be less interaction. Yeah, no, I think I think I think there's going to be less negative interaction. That's what I that's what I believe. We're going to have less negative interaction and more positive interaction in terms of interesting stuff. Cuz cuz nobody sees uh nobody sees like hey, we're going to go sink this tall tailor or we're going to go sink this guy. We don't know if he's doing tall tales or whatever. Um, and it turns out to be, you know, it's just like, uh, well, that was kind of just blah. There wasn't anything really, sp nobody really 
cares to see that so much. What people want to see is those that are engaged in the game going against each other or working together rather than just the, I don't know how to play this game, guys. You know, you mean I can't be toxic and call other pirates poopy butt goblins? I mean, Madrad, you can if you want. <laughs> There's nothing in this update saying that you can't do that. <laughs> be my guest. How are you today? Heck yeah, Madrad. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Poopy Butt Goblin. What a great name for a person. I just hopped in and heard less negative something. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So essentially, there's going to be what's called Safer Seas uh, PvE servers that uh, essentially where uh, people can go to learn the game concepts, not be... Uh, scared of pvp they can go do their stuff learn the voyages do their tall tales they could go through and do all the tall tales they want to do and so yeah gone are the days of saying i was doing a tall tale so yeah i'm i'm excited like i'm not going to use safer servers a whole lot but i'm excited for those who are because that makes everybody else uh more happy too so so, yeah, I'm probably going to be commenting on a lot of people's concerns on Twitter. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I've, I feel like I've got a, a decent grasp on what all of this means, essentially. Um, but yeah, guilds, I'm going to start a guild, guys. It's going to start uh, October 19th. Well, I guess I'll be at TwitchCon at that time. But uh, we're going to make a guild uh, for the stream and y'all can join. It's going to be great. Um, Skull of Siren's song in November is going to be a blast. Looking forward to that. It's, it sounds more engaging than the Fort of Fortune to me. Uh, or not Fort of Fortune. The Chest of Fortune. Wherever that may go. I think that's actually moving next next uh, uh, next season. It's going to go somewhere else. Into a different world event. And then... Um, yeah, Safer Seas. So, you're going to start a guild called the Poopy Butt Goblins. I'm so glad for you, Madrad. I'm so glad. You do you, man. It's all you. <laughs> Do you think that you will be able to be a part of more than one guild? I don't know. And that's what a part of the thing that kind of concerns me is like, if I want to, I want to start a guild. I'm going to start a guild for this, for the stream, uh, a streamer led guild. But I also kind of want to be a, a part of another guild that I'm sure will pop up of uh, sea of Thieves creators, you know, I'd totally join a guild full of Sea of Thieves creators. But first and foremost, I want one for my own community. So, a guild called Peppa's Pigs? No, I think, I think Pepper and my Jack should, that should be his guild. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to call my guild. That's, uh... I'm not sure. That's the hard. That's the hardest thing about guilds is coming up with a name. You know, I mean, I could just have it the same as my Discord and call it the Beyond. I mean, that'd be cool, but I don't know. I'll have to think about it. What I do like though is that you can make your own guild crests, uh, and I'm gonna have a great twelve hours do doing that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyways, that's season ten. Um, I'm excited for it. I know, uh, there's probably going to be something in here that's controversial to some people and you can find that on Twitter if that's what you want. So anyway, or at X, sorry, my bad, Twixter, whatever. So that is season 10. So let's play season nine. <laughs>